Hi, and welcome to our uh, seventh series of lectures for E375. And this uh, lecture series is going to focus on uh, interactive visualization. So we've, this is going to building on you know, the, the use of base R and um, ggplot uh, within the previous uh, couple lecture series in the last lab to kind of uh, make static images. And we're going to use this to set us up for uh, the next lab where we're going to learn about how to making interactive visualizations. So why might we, uh, so the outline of, of this lecture series is we're going to start by talking about why we might want to make interactive graphics and what they are. And then we're going to go through kind of three uh, kind of topics, making inter individual plots interactive, uh, making animations, and then making interactive apps. Uh, so why would we want to make something interactive. Uh, so sometimes we need to uh, make interactive visualizations because we're dealing with high dimensional data. So if you have low dimensional data, you know, just, you know, two columns and X and Y, it's easy enough to make a scatter plot if there's not that many data points, or even if there is a large number of data points. But if you have something that's very common in environmental sciences, if you have data that's varying over both space and time, um, you now have more than two dimensions. And your ability to visualize things once you get past two dimensions gets harder and harder. You know, Three-dimensional plots are hard to interpret, particularly when they're static. A three-dimensional plot is much easier to interpret if you can manipulate that three-dimensional you know, uh, visualization. And you know, in higher dimensions, this gets even harder. Uh, and so the ability to kind of interactively set, subset and you know, look at different parts of the data and explore it in an interactive way can be particularly handy for high dimensional data. Uh, similarly, it's gonna can be helpful for trying to identify structure in the data. So you know you, you make a plot and there's this you know extra clump of points over here. And well, how do you figure out what what those clumps correspond to? I mean, traditionally you'd have to, without interactive visualization, you have to like stop making plots and you have to go and start figuring out how to subset the data to get to the, that subset of data. Uh, and verify that you got the data you're looking at by plotting again and then trying to figure out what was different about that subset. With interactive visualizations, you can often just like click on the data or select, you know, lasso around the data and, and get information about the, the, the points that you're trying to understand. Uh, interactive visualizations can similarly be helpful for, for diagnosing models. Uh, so you know, we can interact not just with uh, raw data, but the predictions of models and trying to understand what, you know, what, what they're doing. Uh, in general, they're very useful for aiding exploratory analyses when we're looking at data. For a lot of the reasons we've just talked about, they help us identify structure, helping us identify patterns in high dimensions, um, helping us, you know, exploratorily diagnose models. Uh, the other place that uh, interactive visualizations can be really helpful is when we're building tools uh, for decision support because you know very often if we have uh, you know analysis we've done to support decision making or uh, you know model models we've used to support decision making uh, decision makers need to be able to explore those and they're gonna you know sometimes ask questions that are not in the existing static figures and it can be helpful very helpful for them as well as for us as the producers to uh, be able to explore the, that data or, or those projections um, interactively. Cool, so that's, that's the basic premise. Uh, and next up, we're gonna talk about how you make basic interactive plots.